everyone, welcome to the Nice Guys Show, our weekly show on Mondays, 11 a.m. Uh, this week I have my co-host, as I had last week, I have from Encinitas, one of my dearest friends, Kathy McLaughlin, who is a uh, spiritual intuitive and a life coach. And thanks for coming again. And I also have a good friend of mine from Encinitas as well, Dr. Michelle Wolford, who is a naturopathic doctor. And this week we have a special guest. Who I hope to have on more often. It's Melissa Maggiore. <laughs> Maggiore. 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 I know Italian. I feel able to do this. You'll all be speaking Italian. We'll get it. We'll get it done. <laughs> Melissa is the proprietor of Tommy V's in Carlsbad, one of my favorite restaurants. You got to go there and visit it. So we're going to talk the restaurant Thank biz you. with Melissa. But uh, let's uh, let's start off with vitamins. We're going to get in a little health and fitness talk here. Um, I saw something online that says that you should take your vitamins either in liquid or powder form. Is that true, Doc? Or? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I definitely have all my patients do either powdered or liquid. Reason being that if you have any sort of digestive issues, your body's going to have a harder time digesting a hard compounded vitamin. So to do it in powder form, it's more bioavailable. Mm -hmm. And liquid, same way. It gets immediately into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is there's a lot of binders and fillers in the capsules. Gluten. And, yeah, yeah, gluten. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I mean, there's so many other things, lots of dyes. And so usually you have some sort of reaction to what the vitamin is actually comprised of. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I've taken the, uh, the hard ones and, and chewed them. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend that. Except for the uh, <laughs> vitamin C you can do. Vitamin C is... Chewable. Kind of chewable, I think. So that one works okay. I also want to talk about marathons. This seems to be marathon season coming up. And I have a lot of friends that either do these half marathons or the what are they, 5Ks and full marathons. Mm -hmm. And marathons are, mm -hmm. what, 26 miles? Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, is, is this good or bad? It seems to me like that's got to be really rough on your joints. What, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. if people, I mean, if you're training properly, then you can teach your body how to be able to endure that kind of exercise. But a lot of people are just like, yeah, man, I want to run a marathon. Never exercise. They pop up off the couch. They expect they're going to be able to do it in like three months. Um, or you get people that do marathon after marathon with no break in between. And, mm -hmm. I mean, that really is hard on your bones, your muscles, your nervous system. Yeah. But people are just into it. Yeah, you, yeah. You ever run any marathons like that? Do I look like I ever ran a marathon? No, <laughs> I would be one of those people that would just get off the couch and say, I'm going to do this marathon. I could drive right 26 now. miles, no problem, right? But I support people. I support people that run marathons. It just marathons. looks painful to me. I don't know. It's, but I guess they get a high, right? What is they're doing? Is that why? Yeah, you totally yeah. get a runner's high. I mean, you're releasing epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin. So you kick in all of those, like, happy neurotransmitters, and you kind of, you do. It's a true runner's high. Yeah, scotch does that for me. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say my liquid vitamin is wine, and that Let's, does that for me. Exactly, too, so. wine. Let's talk about wine a little bit. You, you have a great selection of wine over at your <laughs> Thank restaurant. You. Um, Thank you. What are your, what's your favorite wine? Your you know what? I, I, would, I would be uh, disowned from the family if I didn't say that my favorite wine yeah. is our family's wine. Um, we have a winery in Sicily. Oh, and, neat. Um, oh, wow. And so we, we, we produce um, Bordeaux varietals, uh, Nero d'Avola, which is my favorite, and so I definitely represent our winery at the restaurant. And I just mm. love Italian wine. I love red wine. And it's healthy for you, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Red yes. wine over Absolutely. white. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I must be the healthiest person on this You are, yeah. <laughs> If it's based simply on just wine on consumption. Just on wine consumption. Yes. <laughs> now, Kathy likes Chardonnay, but you like it warm, right? Like what's, warm. what's the reason for warm? Warm because when it's really cold, it tastes like lemonade. I don't get to taste all the flavors. And so I've noticed that at room mm. temp, it's, you can experience the fullness of a Chardonnay. Otherwise, it just tastes like lemonade. Sauvignon Blanc, very dry. Mm -hmm. She's definitely right about that because when you're tasting wines mm -hmm. um, and making decisions for wine lists or judging wines, white wines have to be presented at a warmer temperature mm -hmm. because that's when you can taste all the complexity and you taste the fruit mm -hmm. and, and the profile of the wine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, then why don't they serve it at restaurants a little bit? I guess lukewarm or not as chilled <laughs> or. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Microwaved. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think because in general, the average person likes white wine cold. You know, okay. most people aren't looking for the complexities in wine. They're just looking to be refreshed. I mean, white wine doesn't have all of the same <clears throat> layers as a red wine does. So I think that's one of the wines that you can get away drinking without really... But you pound more of it when, you're, when it's cold. So maybe... I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It depends on the weather. Question. Yeah. Huh. Now, when I went to Italy, I, I found it was really interesting that they had jugs of wine on the dinner table. And it, I mean, the table wine was better than most of the wines we have here. I right. Think. It was just fantastic. Right. And no hangover. 
Really? No hangover. Well, well, I maybe I didn't drink enough of it. No, but they, they explained to me that there aren't the sulfites in right. the native wine and there, that yeah. there is here. Is that true? Right. The, well, a lot of wines there have no, they don't add any extra sulfite. There's naturally occurring sulfur, sulfur mm -hmm. in the wines, but they're not adding extra. So that could be true. Interesting. Well, I am a wine fan. I'll have some tonight. Okay. You know, I have to try at some Tommy of your favorite. Yes, at Tommy V's. And then you'll sure. go run a marathon tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not going to run any marathons. <laughs> and then you'll be in my. And then you'll yes, have go to ahead. see the doctor. I want to talk about um, the, the psychology behind marathon. Yeah, runners, what's up with what that? What each yeah. of our experiences are and what you think is going on there. So. Mm -hmm. What do you think? You're the. <laughs> it's you're the intuitive. It's my experience that um, in, in my practice that people that run the marathons, it's either something that they're running from, literally, you know, or it's an over an overcompensation or an overachieving um, where they feel like, you know, something's missing or there's a void and it's like going the, like a type A personality mm -hmm. type scenario is mm -hmm. what I have found. But didn't you say you experienced some of that? You thought the same thing too? Yeah, I definitely experienced the same thing. I mean, and I will ask my patients that are avid runners, like, what are you running from? Hmm. And oftentimes, I mean, there really is something, maybe not something that they're willing to acknowledge immediately, but there usually is some sort of trauma or life stress, or they want to confront somebody, but they don't know how, or there usually is something that they're trying to get away from. I just yeah. lost every marathon runner yeah. viewer I ever had. Right. I know, I know. Now. They're all going to call This in. is by no means shaming. It's just a yeah. pattern that I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. But there's, you know, people cope in different ways. I suppose that's a healthier way to cope than to... Drugs or anything right. like that. Sure, so. and it's not just marathons. So people, people over exercise. You yes, know, they'll right. just go to the gym two, three times yeah. a day, or just you know too much on the treadmill or stairmaster. Or... Yeah. Well, it's not every marathon runner, mm -hmm. but it's. I mean, people that. I mean, there definitely is a personality, and you definitely can see it when they walk in your office. And I mean, it, it's it's pretty easy to pinpoint. Hmm. Yeah. How do you treat it? You just ask what you're running from and. What, what I found to be really interesting is one of my patients, she uh, ran a marathon and talked about how at you know, certain points in the marathon, just these huge emotional releases, just yeah. sobbing, crying, throwing up, whatever, but that it was very emotional for her. Mm. And, um, and, you know, and then this huge accomplishment and the people that were there to support her at the finish line, she said, that's when you know, you know you have real friends, those people that are standing there when you're done. And so there's a huge emotional component to it, I think. So it's therapeutic and rewarding. I mean, maybe they're even getting the attention that they're, perhaps they're even missing attention and they're not running away from something, to, but yeah. they're running to that yep. attention and then when Absolutely. they're done, they have to do it again and do it again. For Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, oddly. You're right. <laughs> Listen, the weather has been so wonderful this weekend. Let's talk a little bit about sunscreen. Um, I know it's important for us all to wear our sunscreen. I'm, I'm pretty diligent about it. How about you? Um, I, I'm kind of diligent about it. I probably should be more diligent. But i got to tell you, there actually has been a lot of studies that sunscreen can actually cause cancer. What? And the reason being is that a lot of the sunscreens out there, they have all of these added chemicals that once it starts to seep into your skin, because your skin is the largest organ, mm -hmm. so it's going to soak up. Anything you put here is going to go inside you. So I actually make my own sunscreen. I do a little bit of coconut oil. I add calendula, which is a type of flower uh -huh. that, um, like a flower flower, mm -hmm. <laughs> that um, actually helps protect the skin. And, um, and I just do that. And then I try to be really good about when I'm in and out of the sun, you know. And wear a cap. Wear a cap. And uh, do a lot of antioxidants, you know, at night. Like I'll take a lot of vitamin E or A or I'll put other oils on my face before I go to bed. Hmm. Yeah. But does the coconut oil and the calendula actually block the, the negative sun rays, or does it just nourish the skin? Well, no, it nourishes the skin, and it helps block some of the negative sun rays. I mean, it oh. truly does act as somewhat of a sun screen, I'll say, more than a block. So I just you know, learned something new about coconut yeah. oil. Oh, it's great. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, we covered the other thing last week. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up is a, a cool little device I'm actually carrying around with me. It's called a Fitbit. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll put it on the camera one here so you can see a little closely. But it's, a, um, it's actually a little device you can carry with you when you're uh, walking around or even when you're sleeping at night. And it keeps track of all the steps you take throughout the day. It counts them. And it also knows when you're going upstairs. So it counts how many stairs you've gone up. And when you're running, it counts how far you've run. And even on the bike. And... One of the reasons I got it, it's only $99. One of the reasons I got it was because I was having a hard time sleeping and wanted mm -hmm. to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. So when you go to bed, they give you a little wristband you put it in, and it tracks your sleep, and it tells you how often during the night you're waking up and for how long. Mm -hmm. So the, the one night, I was staying in a hotel room, and I was 
up all night. And I was like, God, I didn't sleep. What was going on? And I looked online because it downloads everything wirelessly online. Mm -hmm. I looked online and I was able to see that I woke up on the hour every hour. And I figured out it was because the air conditioning right next to my bed was kicking on oh, like hour. every hour and waking me up. So I'm a real light sleeper. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, I believe it's on Fitbit.com. A lot of gyms have it and Amazon has it as well. And they're just coming out with another part of this um, that's a wireless scale. So you can actually weigh yourself mm -hmm. on the scale and it'll transmit wirelessly as well wow. with the Fitbit all to the online websites. You can see over a period of time, you know, what activity you had, how your weight fluctuated. That's what all women want. Something that actually <laughs> throughout the day Maybe it's a guy thing. their weight onto a... <laughs> well, you know, at least it shows you, you know, on days that your weight's down, you can kind of look back and say, okay, was I super active that day? You right. can put in the things you ate that day. So yeah, I was curious about that. Yeah. So it does do mm -hmm. caloric counting and protein that, and everything for I was going to ask how many calories does it count how many you burn with all the activity that yes. it's tracking? Yes. Counts all that, yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can go online and put in any of the food that you know you've had throughout the day, and it'll figure out you know how many net calories you've hmm. taken in versus burned. I want so, one. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, for ninety nine bucks, yeah. you can't beat it. No. Yeah. So when we come back next segment, we're going to talk to Melissa about the restaurant business. We both have uh, quite a bit of experience with that. She's currently involved in it. I put my ten years in, and I just, you were smart. <laughs> yes, I think I've you had enough of it. But uh, yeah, so we'll be right back. <laughs> 